Hey everyone, welcome back to another Engineering From Home live stream. Uh, my name is Zach Dunham. I am here with Bantam Tools and I'm joined today by Alvaro from Deep Local and Mario from Moonlighter Fab Lab. Um, we're super excited about today's live stream. Um, we put up a post uh, about, I wanna say a month ago, maybe a little bit more. Um, where we were looking to donate some CNC machines, uh, specifically our Bantam Tools desktop uh, PCB milling machine, um, to organizations that had some clever ideas about how they might put the machine to use uh, in the fight against uh, COVID. Um, and uh, both of these organizations, as well as Ithaca Generator, who unfortunately won't be with us today, um, uh, really rose to the occasion. And uh, we're here today to, to talk shop and, and get to know both of you and um, talk about what it is that you're working on, as well as just the crazy world that we that we all find ourselves in. Um, and before I kick it over to you, I'll just say for anyone who's, who's um, joining this one for the first time, if you're curious, we've been doing this basically every Friday uh, for the last couple months. And there are, there are some really great conversations that we've had with um, educators and engineers and designers. Uh, so uh, go to bantamtools.com forward slash engineering from home if you want to um, check out any of the previous week's uh, episodes. Um, let's do a quick, uh, let's do a quick round of introductions. Uh, Alvaro, do you want to um, say a little bit about who you are, what it is that you do, and a little bit about what Deep Local does? Yeah, so I'm Alvaro Varela. I'm an electrical engineer at Deep Local. Um, I guess <laughs> interested in a lot of a lot of stuff, a lot of maker type stuff. Deep local. I mean, we're an interactive experience company. We do a lot of interactive experiences for brands, um, companies like Google and Nike and Adult Swim. We've done stuff for, and mainly what we do are interactive experiences. So, um, company will come to us. They're like, "Hey, you want to do something cool, something interactive? Um, what can you do?" So, back and forth, you know, do that kind of stuff, and then come to some kind of idea and we make that idea happen. Yeah, there's some there's some pretty pretty fun and interesting uh, interactive media pieces that you have up on your website. So um, we'll, we'll be periodically dropping some things in the chat. Oh, Amanda's already on it. Deeplocal.com is in the chat. So if you're uh, okay. and you're curious, definitely go hit that up. You check out our Instagram too. We've got a lot of content there. It's just at Deeplocal on Instagram. Sweet. And uh, Mario, uh, where are you where are you joining us? Actually, so so you're 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 joining us from Pittsburgh today, right? Is that yes, right? I am in Pittsburgh. Yeah. Cool. And Mario, how about yourself? I'm in Miami, Florida. Uh, I'm home actually today in Miami, and uh, I'm part of the Moonlighter Makerspace in Miami. Um, and we are basically a, a fab lab shop. You know, uh, we call it a, a gym for for tools, right? And for making and for engineering and, and, and industrial work. Um, we've been around almost five years. Um, I'm the director on the on the nonprofit side, so we run the Miami Make Affair for the last couple of years. Um, we run a lot of the open, uh, like a whole bunch of the public open spaces challenges. We, we you know did stuff for the Super Bowl, solar lighting for benches. We did a whole bunch of like a, a whole bunch of things, amazing projects. We work with a lot of local communities and local groups. We've been working on the growing beyond Earth on that with NASA and our. Our botanical garden here so we're putting actually vegetables on the space station for the last eight years nine years we have elementary school kids and high school kids working on that for the last like five or six years last this year we had a couple of big challenges uh that's the kind of stuff we do there and we again we have roughly about 30 core members uh, and then people come in and out it's usually around uh architect season or design season the shop gets really packed and then cool uh, that's what you usually do but again a lot of everything you see in a maker space a lot of printers laser cutters now Bantam, C small CNC, a big CNC. Uh, nice. that. Um, and uh, you just you just shared this a few moments ago, and I didn't realize this that you also produced the uh, Miami Maker Fair, which yes. is one of the one of the more popular uh, satellite uh, maker fairs, if you will. Yeah, we, we've US. been growing uh, exponentially every year for the last six years. But pretty nice. Really, really cool. Um, let's be, be before too long. Uh, uh, do you have do you have a little something that you've been been using uh, or you've, excuse me been making on the Bantam um, CNC and could you just talk a little bit about what your um, uh, PPE efforts have been because it, it's pretty substantial the the amount of PPE that Moonlighter FabLad has been producing. yeah so to date we've made almost forty eight hundred uh, face shields and we've delivered about almost four thousand already uh, yesterday we were making some more so we usually make about thousand 
a clip, usually uh, a week, and then we we distribute them. And mostly has been going to hospitals, a lot of ALFs, a lot of um, a lot of uh, firefighters. Believe it or not, firefighters have these uh, um, disposable ones that they they hate, so they want like ours now because they keep them on the, the whole time. Mm-hmm. Um, and and the ALFs, you know, we've done a lot of the ALFs down here too. And then we've been working with uh, one of the local medical groups. Uh, basically, it's um, medical students that are doing a lot of the sterilization process for us, right? For the ones going to the hospitals. Um, yep. And so, again, we are we hope to do 8,000 shields by the end of this month. Um, and that was a donation made by Coke. So Coke actually gave seven tons of plastic, literally seven tons. It's a one-ton roll. And those are distributed across basically all of Florida. So uh, each each makerspace that runs sort of make affairs out of Florida got one. So... Miami got a ton, Orlando got a ton, Jacksonville got a ton, and those make about six to seven, sixty-five hundred to eighty-five hundred shields, depending on the shield types. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, I think the OSMS group, Eastern Florida, has probably done over twenty thousand face shields already. Um, this is so, these are really big numbers. Those are yeah, a lot of. And lot then, of and we've done a whole bunch of stuff around some masks, but it, the guys in Orlando have done also like something like five thousand cloth masks. For for uh, first time for uh, workers, mm-hmm. it, it's been pretty uh, pretty impressive. And then you know now we're working on hopefully the next phase of like what is phase one of this thing. So we're looking at product. The project we're sort of working on again is to to do quick temperature readings uh, within a certain space as you walk through a corridor. This right? is the the project that you're talking about that you're you're prototyping with. Yeah, that's one of the products I'm say using stuff yeah. off mostly Adafruit parts. Mm-hmm. Um, some Chinese parts because some Adafruit parts are unavailable because everybody's trying to do some sort of projects. And then, you know, I'm probably going to copy Alvaro's project too <laughs> very shortly. <laughs> so I think that's pretty awesome. Um, but those are the things we, we've been working on. Uh, and then, you know, learning the tool. I, we hadn't had one before. We, we really got one almost three weeks ago. And really, I've been heads down on it. And also learning, uh, getting getting familiar with Eagle because I have used KiCad in the past and, uh, and I have Fritz in the past. So I'm trying to... It was. It's been a learning curve on Eagle. I would. I would say. Totally. Yeah. It is. I mean. And, and yeah. For sure. Um. So you're just to recap here. Moonlighter is kicking out thousands of these of these shields. Uh, something close to like a biweekly basis. Here we're talking like uh, several like every, thousand a month. Yeah. So we're probably doing like a thousand every seven days. That's roughly. Okay. And that's and, I took a break for three days. I had to move my son back from college. So and they and they did some without me. But we've been basically about with a team of three have been doing about a thousand face shields every seven days. That's re- it's really really impressive. And then separate from that, you're now using the Bantam Tools desktop PCB milling machine to do some circuit board prototyping for a what would be um, a device to check people's temperature as they're entering and exiting a building. Correct. And it's through a corridor, so like we're using uh, that uh, some temperature stuff and like the the lidar in flight from Adafruit, so we can get people that you know this the right distance because also that may, that matters in accuracy and yep. and so we're trying to do that. And then one of the things we're trying to do is can we can we get people to come back in the shop, right? A lot of people want to get back in the shop, like they want to come back to make stuff. And how do we schedule that? And how do we let them come in? And how do we make it safe? And so it's you know some of that is also you know uh, selfishly we, we want to protect the, our, the shop and people in the shop too. Of course. Um, I want to circle back with you on that because I have a lot of questions to ask about how what it's like to manage a makerspace in that regard in this in this time. Um, but Alvaro, um, give us a sense of what you've been working on. Um, we were just discussing some of the YouTube projects that you have or some of the projects, excuse me, that you've posted on YouTube. Um, what what all are you all working on and how have you been using the uh, the Bantam Tools desktop PCB mailing machine? So yeah, like, like I said earlier, before we went live, aside from our regular um, client work, I've just been kind of trying to do some coronavirus-related stuff. Um, a lot of it, like I said, has been to bring joy to people, not straight up, you know, PPE. Well, PPE is very important. It's also important that people, you know, can still have some fun in these these really uncertain, trying times. Um, yes. So a couple of links of the things we did. We did Scrubber, which was a um, soap dispenser that plays about 20 seconds of music as per the CDC recommended length of time to wash your hands. So basically you dispense your soap to wash your hands and you wash your hands so as long as the music plays. Um, we've also done Face Off, which is a plugin for it's a Chrome extension for Google Hangouts and Meet that tracks how often you touch your face during a meeting. And um, 
That's crazy. Basically, you know, gives you some feedback. It's like, oh, you touch your face, and it keeps a tally of how many times you touch your face during the entire hangout. Um, <laughs> yeah, set up my hands now. <laughs> <laughs> and then the third thing that we've released so far is what I had originally gotten uh, or applied for the the mill for was our UV project, which um, at the time we really had no idea where were we were going to take this. We knew we wanted to do something with like UV light to disinfect PPE, but we weren't. I'm not sure if that's on my end, but uh, Alvaro, we uh, we were locked up a little bit on your video for a second. I think you should pop back momentarily. Which? Oh, okay, we've got you again. Can you go back to the uh, the beginning of the UV description? We uh, you yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so I had originally applied for the uh, the Bantam mill when we were we didn't really know what we were going to do with UV. So we we're like, oh, what can we do? What we have the capabilities to do? Um, one of the things we were thinking about were UV LEDs, which are um, UVC light is used to sanitize things in all kinds of um, medical and uh, professional settings. So what we were going to do was we were investigating UVC essentially. Um, what the direction the project uh, finally took was uh, less of like a UVC LED type thing and more of can we, you know, can we go to Home Depot? What can we go to Home Depot or hardware store? One trip, grab everything we need to put together a box that we can disinfect stuff with. Um, what we ended up coming up with was UV, um, which is a DIY at home box you can make yourself um, to sanitize P PPE or really whatever you want to sanitize. Um, and that consisted of a bunch of off-the-shelf parts from Home Depot, like an aquarium or a pond sanitizer that uses UVC light, um, some various other parts from Home Depot, foil tape, different yeah. kinds of box, that kind of stuff. Yeah, when you were when you um, initially sent in that application, I was I was looking into um, little surface mount. Uh, they're like the fifty fifty packages that the exactly. um, uh, the, the like we're all familiar with them. The like the NeoPixel type package that that come in UVC. But I was really shocked by the price tag. Like um, at least on DigiKey, I was seeing some some crazy prices for um, for even just a few of these. So um, uh, regardless of where that project goes, I. I also do really enjoy this this approach of like making it making it more of like a instructables shop project. Here here's your list of of goods that you need to go to Home Depot for, and mm -hmm. it's that much more that much more accessible. But yeah, and then using like the mill specifically, I have some. I mean, UVC is kind of not the safest thing to play with, right? So like, yeah, um, <laughs> I intend to use the uh, the mill to put in some safety features like a timer, some uh, limit switches for when you take that cover off. And that's one of the things I'm kind of working on right now. Um, so it's kind of where I gotcha. intend to take it. Cool, cool. Cut the power, Op you open up your- it's Essentially, because like, right now it's a pretty good you know DIY fix we have for that using extension cords that you need to undo before you take the top off of the box. It's pretty, pretty great, but <laughs> you can make this a little smarter. Got you. Um, so let's pull back for a minute. Um, we're all we're all sort of uh, makers at at heart. Um, cl very clearly by the description that that you all have have shared with the projects that you're working on. Um, one of the things, again, it's like before before we go live, we talk about all the stuff that we're going to talk about. So the other thing that we were talking about before we went live was um, just sort of this transition that we've all been on that there's the when you know in the times that we can remember from three months ago whether it's going into your shop in your office or going into your makerspace there were personal projects that we were all working on and now when we have time in the shop whether it's at home or mario for you it's at your makerspace there's this uh almost like we're 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 forced into this this feeling of like if I'm going to be hitting the the laser cutter I better be working on a face shield or if I'm going to be hitting the you know the router I'm probably going to be working on the, you know prototyping these electronics for my UVC switch or whatever it is. How are you all thinking about this and making time for yeah? How are you dealing with that 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 push and pull? Um, yeah, like I, like I said earlier, once once this all started, I you know uh, I thought, man, I have some time to catch up with some projects I had been put on hold for a long time. Uh, I, I was working on a PDP seven sort of uh, retro box, uh, and and all this happened. And then like again, the we got a call that said, hey, we got this donation from Coke, 
do you guys want it? And how can we say no? Right. Yeah. Uh, and then within like that hour of that first call, um, Tom and I were on the phone with like all the maker spaces that we know, you know, uh, like the guys in Milwaukee, the guys everywhere that's, what are they doing? How are they doing it? You know, um, you know, within two weeks, guys in Milwaukee were already doing basically, they were, you know, we've, we've done about 10,000 shields for other people. We were just cutting the shields for these third parties that are making them, but, um, these guys already had done like uh, vacuum forming, and uh, they had done not vacuum forming, um, where they mold like a uh, injection. Uh, huh? They had done the injection molding for the headbands already, so they had just figured that out. So we're, Miami, we're still having a whole bunch of people give us donations on the headbands, but they had figured that out, and we were looking into how they did that. And so everybody started using their skills and technology skills to see what how they can help and give back yeah. to that group, right? And so we right. share a lot of ideas pretty quickly. And so everybody's personal project became PPE projects. Like how do we yep. how do we laser cut masks faster? How do, cloth masks faster? How do we laser cut these uh, this PETG stuff on the laser on the laser printer? They're in rolls. When you take them out of the rolls, they, they want to stay curved. So a lot of jigs, a lot of things, a lot of things that happen there. You know, a lot of I've learned more about PETG in the last four weeks than I probably ever want to know about PETG. I don't know. I don't think I get where PETG was four four weeks ago. <laughs> uh, uh, medical grade pet g which makes it even different you know it's like uh, uh so those are the things all, all our personal projects were put on hold and and we've learned a lot about what we need and i actually we built a lot we've built a huge community uh and it, which is good for me because they're on the make affair but like first robotics which is uh the first robotics team for all of south florida they have been cleaning and printing 3d printed parts for us at about 800 every three days so the reason we can do a thousand is they bring 800 and we're building 800 they bring me 800 more and that's that's the process and then we have a whole bunch of schools that are donating the 3d printed parts to the headbands um pla and pet g stuff and, and abs and so and then that has to be tracked because the, the you know the farmer can use abs i mean the farmer can use pla and uh, pet g but the hospitals can't, can only use abs and so so we have like another process there so Right, it's, it's you're turning your your makerspace into a factory. It's a factory, and then all the makers all the makerspaces that were not being used at schools have been now turned on, right? By the, a lot of those 3D printers went home, a lot of the glow forges went home, and people are cutting masks, people are cutting like cloth masks, people are cutting um are, mm -hmm. are printing parts for us. So really, the whole the whole community in South Florida, and I, I would say all of Florida, because you know, and the, and I would say even the guys in Milwaukee, which I keep in touch with, is pretty good. They've been, everybody's been the same thing. We shared a lot of ideas, uh, you know, like now I'm going to yeah. build a sterilizer. That's on my, it's on my to-do list now that I've learned <laughs> that on Tuesday and I just found out the guy made it. So that's pretty <laughs> awesome. So those are the things that's, that's the thing about uh, makers is we, sh we share a lot of things, right? We, uh, yep. sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. People, you know, uh, you know, sometimes you, you have a PC board you design that ends up in like a Chinese version and like an AliExpress, you go, how did that happen? But, you know, I, somebody tweeted the other day. That's awesome. You know, I felt a badge of honor that somebody copied my board and like yeah, kept my comments oh. on it. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, to to take this a step further than to just go back to the um comment that you brought up a few minutes ago, how are you now thinking about opening back up your makerspace? So right now we're we are doing jobs for our makers. Basically they can schedule and they can drop stuff off and stuff like that. I think so for us, uh, the county is allowing things to open back up on Monday. Yeah, I know. That was so, my other question is. And so it's still 25% capacity and try to limit the folks. Um, but, you know, because of safety and regulations for us, we have a certain size of a shop box for the big CNC and the lasers. Mm -hmm. We have certain space for the kids to work on and other people to be there. So our makerspace isn't that big when you take all the sections that have, that have been cut off because of dust or smoke or, you know, all the things you've done for that. So. Uh, it's something where we, we're, we're sort of trying to figure out now. That's why this in-flight thing is something we want to get to so that we want to limit how you come in. We want to limit the peace. South Florida is very hot. So you can be, I get how high temperatures is getting out of your car and walking a block to the makerspace, you know, from the parking garage. So those are the things that, how do we handle those things? Uh, it, it's tricky. It's tricky. It's something we're, we're definitely been working on for the last couple of days. And, and these are the things that um, I would say for some of our makers that, live there they're going to have priority on some of this stuff i mean like uh because if you, like you said on a friday we found out we were shutting down and that was it so people that were mid project they left stuff in their in their locker mid project or left stuff on the shelf mid project sure those guys want to come back and again we had a make it for coming up that got postponed so a lot of these guys were all working towards the make it for a lot of our kids a lot of our uh you know main members so sure 
but it sounds like for the most part, everyone is, is, uh, or maybe I'm, maybe I'm projecting here, but it sounds like for the most part, people are pretty committed to this, this pretty Herculean effort that, that you've undertaken with. Yes. Yes. I, I mean, we, I, this is, I mean, Moonlighter is just, we're just a part of this like cog, right? We are doing great things, but I would say it's the whole yeah. SMS community is, has come together on that. And, uh, we have a lot of help from a lot of make communities down here, right? Which yeah. usually we, we're outreaches for us, right? Like a lot of the like the the guys that run the space program for us out of the out of the um, botanical garden, which is Fairchild, they they printed over three hundred hairbands, four hundred headbands already, right? For us, and so sure. that's how this all works. All these guys come in and say, "Hey, how we can we have we have equipment? You yep. helped us in the past. How can we help back?" And that's what they've done for us. Yep. So Alvaro, um, it's a it's a very different scene for for deep local. I mean, obviously you're not you're not a makerspace. You're not a uh, you're not a, a, a nonprofit organization. You guys are are trying to run a business um, during this time, which has its a completely different set of challenges. Um, one of the things that I thought was really interesting, and maybe you could recap this a little bit more, is just uh, how you are setting up kind of a virtual shop um, in. In, in light of, of, of COVID? Yeah, so, um, so. yeah, does that make sense? Sorry, I'm not phrasing that. How, how have you guys gone from having like a really dedicated space to now having a completely distributed team? Well, I mean, I, th I think we've been, we've been pretty successful at it. Um, like it's, it's been kind of weird because like our projects haven't stopped, our clients haven't, you know, stopped, you know, asking for whatever. Um, so it's been, the transition has been weird. We've done it successfully, but like I had said earlier, a lot of us we do have you know CNC machines, CNC routers at home. We have 3D printers at home. We have EE setups at home. I have some test equipment here. I have scopes. I have power supplies. I have all kinds of stuff at home. So um, we were able to relatively smoothly transition from being able to go in a huge shop every day to get our jobs done to having to prototype stuff at home. <laughs> um, it's kind of weird. Like I said earlier, first day they called for the um, work from home order. We put together a list of equipment we each had, each of our engineers. Um, so like we have been able to, I mean, not do things as efficiently and as nicely as we did in the shop, but we've been able to get a lot of work done from home. How have there been, has there been anything that's really struck you as like, just like a new way that you're collaborating. And I guess this is to both of you that a new way that you're collaborating on these projects in kind of an, a remote way, even if it's like, Oh, I'm now doing the board layout here, but this other engineer is populating it, you know, at, at his home. Cause he's got the reflow. I don't know. We have some funky <laughs> setups like that internally at Bantam tools right now, I would say at least on the marketing team of how we're producing projects and stuff. Are, are, are you using Slack Zach? Are, are oh, of you, course. You... <laughs> oh, of course we're using Slack, but I mean like even things where it's like, um, like, uh, our videographer, he's shooting some of the projects, but I'm like milling some of the boards and then, uh, doing like, you know, populating them and soldering them up here and then like handing them off to him and he's producing the videos elsewhere. And, um, so I don't know, but at like a comp at like a different, different company for you, Alvaro, like, are, are you guys have any of these new sort of distributed engineering, uh, challenges created new workflows for you? Yeah, so it's pretty much exactly like you said when this all first started. I was working on a um, project where we had like a bay of encoders that um, would change content on these four screens above this um, like this tabletop essentially. So I uh, prototyped up that board I have somewhere. <laughs> this board right here. Cool. Got all that working, soldered that all up, made sure my encoders were fine, made sure my encoders were talking to our gum band. Um, exhibit management platform and then I'm like, all right, this is ready for software. Our software guy comes out, picks up the stuff off my porch and then goes to his yeah. house and then yeah. he's writing code to make the, the content happen, make the content work with the physical dials. So totally. it's been a lot of stuff like that, a lot of, hey, are you ready for this? It's on my porch or can I come <laughs> pick this up from you? <laughs> So just like you said, it's been that kind of stuff. It's really weird because like our office, we work in a, we have an open office and it's really collaborative. Anything I ever need, I just yell 20 feet to somebody or walk, you know, like, hey, this is ready for you. Or, hey, can you help me with this? Or, hey, you know, do this. And now it's like, we're so, so isolated, which yeah. that's been the biggest change. But like I said, we've been pretty successful, pretty like remote handoffs, porch handoffs, that kind of stuff. Um, 
yeah. they managed it pretty well. <laughs> Yeah, the interesting thing is that these these are now systems that are being codified, um, whether it's for a private, private business or for a makerspace. Like Mario, what you're describing to me is that you are setting up a system for like QA, QC for your shields, which is not necessarily something that just stops at the shields. It could go to whatever the next project is as well. Yeah, exactly. and, and that's the thing is, I mean, we've had Slack, but we really, we only use Slack around producing events, right? Honestly, that's what the Slack was for. And now it's become the tool of, the, of how we do everything, you know, inside yeah. the makerspace. So, and, and then we've invited, and because it's for a nonprofit, we've been able to invite as many people back into there. So we have the schools in there, we have a lot of the, the makers in there. Um, like the guy that helps me do all the board stuff uh, is, you know, a coworker of mine, but also, you know, like a genius. So I'm trying to get him involved yesterday and today I was like, I'm gonna have to make exceptions for you to come to makerspace next week because I need to finish this and I'm gonna need your I'm gonna need you to help me solder and build these boards. You know, like, uh, uh, look, I, I know now for as of yesterday, my first board is almost right. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah. gonna be, it's gonna be another try uh, tomorrow or, or Sunday. So it's like, um, those that's are the things, the, you know. That's the beauty of a of a of having a PCB mail though on your desk. For the most part, if you're if you're doing like a, you know, if you're if you're not doing like really really crazy tight traces or a huge huge board, it's gonna take you like maybe 10 minutes to mill another board. And so, um, yeah. Um, yeah. That, 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 this is why I love this tool. This is, again, in the old days, I'd have to wait for me to sip something, fish it, and send it out, wait for the FedEx package to come back, and I lose a week. So here, I'm, not, I'm only losing a couple hours, right? And, and I get to do it again. Before I forget, um, and this is sort of side banter, but we should give you all the updated, like the advanced speeds and feeds for the, for running the mill, if you haven't already found them, because the default ones operate at like 30% uh, of the potential that the mill actually has. So once you get comfortable and you start using the advanced feeds and speeds, you can you can really just mill out um, boards nonstop yeah. uh, really quickly. Again, I mean, 10 minutes is is a lot faster than 10 days. So I, I, for sure, for sure. Yeah, seven yeah, yeah, yeah. minutes, eh. Sure, sure. Totally, totally. It, I, it's, for me, it's magical. I mean, again, uh, this is something we, we wanted in our makerspace forever. And again, something I, I, me and Tom have been talking about forever. And so it's, we were so excited to get it. We're so excited to, to use it. We're so, I mean, you'll see lots of projects coming to us from in the future with this. And, and again, uh, we plan to do some things with the kids this summer. Uh, one of the things, we, we run summer camps all summer. Um, but that's going to sort of become virtual so we're looking at making kits we doing that i mean one of the big things right. the kids have asked is to make like led dog tags for their dogs right um because everybody now has a pet everybody's love their pet again because they're home with their pets all day so so those are things we're probably going to use the mill for to create these uh small pcbs for leds for for dog tags so they can put the dog tag on one side LED on the other side and so those are like those are projects that we are seeing a whole bunch of parents say hey we need to keep, keep our kids busy what can yeah. we do and we want I to make that stuff happen. Yeah, I hear that. I've been uh, doing uh, Sunday afternoon Arduino classes with my with my uh, ten year old nephew. So it's uh, yeah, um, and uh, yeah, we're excited to see 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 where all those projects um, go for you guys. We're we're excited to to see um, see you using the mill and putting it putting it to good use. Um, the the one question I think that I also wanted to touch on with, for both of you is. You know, eight weeks ago, you applied for this mill donation thing. And eight weeks ago, our, everyone's, the entire world was a different place than it is now. And last week, it was a different place than we were expecting it to be, you know, this Friday. How are you, um, both in the makerspace setting and then also in the deep local setting, thinking about engineering with that kind of moving target? Um, I think it, for, for you, Mario, I, I assume that it kind of goes back to this this thing that we were driving at with you're codifying a system for potentially a future, I, I don't know, this sounds like super negative, but potentially a future crisis that's, you know, on this scale where you know how to mobilize in this way that is, that can be really efficient. Are yeah. there... I know, I, I think, I, I, well, I think it's for both of us, for all three of us, there, we have a playbook now, right? Th these things haven't happened in the modern era, right? So now we have playbooks that we've we can do i mean you know my day job is as a cto we have a playbook now and a lot of these things um you learn from both sides you know i tell people i go to makerspace to learn how to do my job better and vice versa right and so um what do you mean by that uh, yeah can you just elaborate on that a little bit more i think that's yeah so like 
I try, like, I, we try a lot of crazy things. I, I mean, I, 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 I'm one of those guys that something that interests me or like, uh, one of the guys in, in, in my circle of makers make something that's like, ah, that's something I wanted to know more about, right? If it's VR, if it's, you know, making PCB boards, if it's like, you know, doing more things of like uh, public public space challenges that we've done in the past. So those are the things where, where we think we want to attract people to become makers and to in any in any form that we can. Sometimes that's through video games, that's sometimes through making, sometimes it's through public art, sometimes it's just to on challenges that we do, we, we make, you know, folks, you, you have to find what, what, what motivates folks to come. And that's why I took on the Maker Fair, right? Um, and basically what we do is um, the company I work for has a uh, space inside the mo uh, Moonlighter, right? So the company I work for has a, a, like a, a, a space inside um, uh, Moonlighter that we have as our tab lab. So we, we want to go design something. I mean, we're talking about just making a sign for the wall. We're talking about making a, something improvement to one of our standing desks. We have that as a, as a resource for anybody who wants to come there and say, hey, that's how you, you get better. But that's how we get ideas and folks to sort of, it, it allows you to fail, right? What, mm -hmm. what Makerspaces does is it allows you to fail. And I just saw Jen Shackner's uh, e um, video yesterday that she, she's making these lights. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because she goes through all the emotions we all go through a Makerspace when you build a project. She goes from this would be awesome, Oh, that's such horrible. I'm gonna have to make a second one. By the end, it looked beautiful, and she was very happy with it. And so I tweeted about that because that's how we feel every project. Like, you know, it's the imposter syndrome where you think, "Oh my God, why am I doing this? How can I do this?" And then you fail. But sometimes you learn so much in that failure. I've, I've learned more on failure at a makerspace, and I can't, I can't tell you. And I, it gives you that space where I don't have a boss there, I don't have anybody there, and I can bring that stuff I, I learned back. Right? Uh, I'm a, I'm a coder by, by trade. That's really how my my real skill set um, i'm a musician and a coder i went to school for music but i was coding before that um awesome. and then that's the things that you know that, that's what i did but i got into the engineering and, and fixing stuff because i just curious why throw it away it's gonna throw it away anyways just open a bar and just try to fix it and that's <laughs> that's what happened when i was 10 and 15 and 20 and fixing ipods and computers and then then you learn a lot of stuff on, on the way and today it, it the, the information is pretty much endless, right? Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of makerspaces, like um, I was in the Milwaukee makerspace last year from Milwaukee Maker Fair, and their wiki is like out of control. Like if you want to make this thing in the wiki, it says, here's what you need, here's what you do, here's your shopping. And if you have any problem, here's the guy you should call and talk to if you want to have you know, some support. And those yeah. are things we, 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 we copy. Like, you know, that's the thing. We just, just, you know, let's just steal and borrow from the best guys. And that's what we've done in, in our, our makerspace. But that's the thing about the work and play is that a lot of my work influences my play and a lot of my play influences my work. I mean, it's, it's, it's one of those things where the future is, is, has always been dictated by hobbyists, right? You want to see the future, go ask the hobbyist what the future is. And that's where, you know, that's where VR, when we first got VR a while back ago and, uh, you know, for sure. Uh, the, the, uh, the early adopters are usually the people that have been, been messing with. with and then, you know, I see kids regard. making rockets today. Like we have in our, our space, we had these two kids that are going to MIT. They, they built these amazing rockets with telemetry built in GPSs and they would go to NASA to launch them. And those guys are like a year from graduation that were in our makerspace where I thought I helped them like work on their GPS stuff. <laughs> but it was like, those kids were like, I was amazed that I, I like, I'm not worthy to have those kids in the same room with me. And there's like, here were 14, 15 year olds. And, now our, our MIT grads next year, and those are out of our space. And then we've had yeah. a lot of kids that come in and, and they've changed careers and now are, are going to Harvard or going to you know the uh, uh, CMU. These are kids where they went, wow, I didn't know this was available to me. And then they leave with, I mean, we have 12 year olds now in, like in KiteCAD and in, uh, in Tinkercad where they build the most amazing things. I'm like, I walk in, you built that? He goes, yeah, I've been working on it for a week. And like, look at it, I was like, <laughs> Like I'm gonna, I, I've hired those kids to do help me on my project. <laughs> I did. I hired one of them to form factor a thing for me, and he did it for me. I was like, why not give him the money? Like I, I don't care. I, you know, those are the things that we, I love about the makerspace, right. and that that's gonna inform him for the rest of his life for the ability he can do. Well, that's those are, I don't know, so many inspiring anecdotes that you just dropped there. It's, that's. Um, I wish I wish I was growing up, you know, had grown up near the Miami Makerspace, I guess, or Moonlighter Fab Lab, excuse me. Um, Alvaro, does Deep Local have a sort of new company ethos that is that is one that's changing every Monday? Um, <laughs> um, I don't know if I'd call it new. A lot of the stuff for us is, like I said, uh, a lot of the workflow is new, but 
a lot of it's the same. Um, I think one of the things Deep Local prides itself on is just having like a really light team who's really versatile and can adapt like super quickly. And um, like a lot of our, our work that we do, we go out to conferences and it's these huge installs and it's small teams. So um, we're used to like innovating and, and uh, improvising and all that kind of stuff. So while like this has caused workflows to change, like we've all adapted to it pretty, pretty well, pretty easily. <laughs> Kudos. That's, I mean, that's huge. And uh, <laughs> it's definitely what it does speak to like an engineer's mindset. And it's also an, um, uh, this sort of creative, creative tech environment is one that um, lends itself to improvisation. I would say it's, it's funny that Mario mentioned he has a background in music because like a lot of people at Deep Local, we have backgrounds in the arts as well. Oh. I have a, uh, I have a degree in fine arts as well as a degree in electrical engineering. So, <laughs> yeah, music, music composition here. So, yeah, um, yeah. No, it's it's very true. Um, it's a it's a we're drawing on all of our talents, um, mm -hmm. not just the, not just the engineering ones. Um, well, yeah. All I can say is we're really excited to see where 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 both of you take it um, with with both of these. Um, both of these machines, uh, goalie drops into chat. What would engineering be without art? I think that's very <laughs> I feel like you'd be surprised though. A lot of like the strictly engineering types, they are completely, completely on the other side of that creativity. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, 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 that's what, and that's what's cool about a makerspace. Um, and again, just to refer a second, but the <laughs> last season of making it, I thought was a makerspace in a nutshell. Like you see it because there's a lot of collaboration in making it. And that's what you see. Like I go into the shop to work on some real technical engineering stuff or I'm doing, you know, prototyping for my for my day job at a space. And then you see these kids building these like modding nerf guns, like modding nerf guns or making their own keyboards and, and somebody's making these beautiful artwork and, and then it's like that's in, that's inspiring to me. Like it's like wow, that's 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 awesome. Like those yeah. are things that you don't think about and that's where in a makerspace you run into these people doing other things. You know that that's just pretty amazing. Like we have one of the guy that does like this intricate like artwork with 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 uh, the laser cutter, which he makes these trains. He makes all these butterflies. It's just yeah. every day like he does something so amazing. We're like I'm always at, at all. I mean, again, I just to take my money. Like I, I want I want it all. Like right? that's that's and and he'll be the one to figure out the the nice way to have all of your your shields collapse in some way or figure exactly. do, do something that's sort of kinetic with, with the next PPE object that right. you Right. And that's uh, the thing is produce. when you're in there, somebody says, Hey, why don't you try that? I'm like, yeah, I yeah. hadn't really, that's not knowing what you're in it. And sometimes you're in the weeds, right They're They, they can see from far. So like, have you tried that? I was like, Oh darn, you're right. Let's just go do that. And, you know, well, to close out here, um, what, uh, Mario, I'll start with you. Um, what do the next uh, four weeks look like for for yourself and for uh, Moonlighter Fab Lab? I think our goal is to get eighty five hundred of these face shields out in the next three weeks, uh, and possibly get another ton of coke. That's that's a possibility. Um, we'll see what this new first phase does, and if it really, you know, has uh, we get a bounce from this, which I hope we don't. Um, but really, it's 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 now the, again the ability that I think to show folks that we can do this. We have a plan. Um, get folks back into making uh, real things and uh, try to hopefully away from the PPE stuff. Uh, hope the supply chain you know sort of catches up. But again, if this comes back in the fall, we're prepared. We help. We have a plan. We have a way to do this. We have all these connections to hospitals, local government, and uh, and other fire departments locally, right? Um, it's really continuing to just be an outreach for these folks and say, hey, we're here for you. Um, if you need us to be, um, you know, access for you to help you cut stuff if you need to do that, uh, that's what we do. And then the second part is how do we how do we continue to educate these kids virtually? So virtual summer camps is a thing we're going to do. Uh, we're going to do a lot of things with the Bantam on that and hopefully show a couple of things, how it works, that process, send them the kid that came from that machine. Um, and really continue the outreach virtually. I think uh, right now we're in a golden age where, you know, if you want to build something, I'll, you know, I'll just put posted how you can build that. That's that's what we want to be able to do. So anybody can do that with that wants to sort of dive down and, and just it's getting the word out. Really, it's 
what we yeah. would do in person and in in, in, in at maker spaces or through local events or local engagements but doing that now through that space and through virtually you know cool well we uh we can't wait to see where you go with it and uh huge in many, many, many high fives on that just enormous number um, of shields that you all are putting out for, for local hospitals and, um, and fire departments. Um, Avara, what, what, are, what are the next, what does the next month look like for Deep Local? I'm um, not quite sure. PA is doing a phased reopening and um, this county just got the go ahead to reopen a very limited capacity. So we're looking at ways where we can start getting back into the shop on a limited basis um, and do so safely. Um, so we're kind of trying to transition to that, um, working out some plans to do that. Um, outside of that, it's more work from home, kind of keep making some cool stuff. I think we have a few other cabin fever, coronavirus related projects in the works. Um, so we'll see. Cool. Well, we'll we'll be sure to tune in and uh, check back in with you on the UVC project and um, see how that's going. Um, and uh, yeah, anyone who's uh, again, anyone who's watching, um, feel free to jump in and check out some of the old live streams we've done over the past two months. Uh, it's bantamtools.com forward slash engineering from home. Um, Alvaro, Mario, thank you both so much for joining and uh, sharing about life and. Uh, and work and art and making. Um, this has been great. Thank you for having us. Yeah, thanks. thanks.